thank you, Dino, for the introduction. So, uh, hi, everyone. I'm Prabhat Tabesekar. I'm currently working as a, a technical lead at WSO2. So, I'm going to be presenting, you know, uh, the last, the final track of the, uh, you know, uh, the day in IoT, uh, you know, space on uh, connected device management for enterprise mobility with uh, WSO2 Mobile Device Manager. So, before we uh, really um, delve into the rest of the contents of my presentation, I'll quickly, you know, walk you through the outline. So we will first, think, you know, we, we will uh, first be discussing about the device management problem, and um, you know, uh, I mean, how it all began and how things turned out to be a bigger problem that you know most of the people nowadays trying to, you know, fix. And then um, we'll be discussing about this device management and connected device management, what these concepts are all about before really getting ourselves into discuss about enterprise mobility. What follows that is you know, uh, some key questions and challenges for IT managers that they would usually come across when it comes to you know, adapting a successful enterprise mobility management suite into their business organizations. So uh, then I would uh, like introduce WS2 Mobile Device Manager as a potential solution you know, uh, you know, to all these key questions and challenges for IT managers. And uh, towards the final part of the presentation, I'll be discussing about some features and benefits that uh, the WS2 Mobility Device Manager you know, has to offer for people to you know, establish a successful enterprise and in, you know, uh, mobility in management infrastructure you know, within their organizations. So the device management problem. Well, as the world evolved over the last few decades, you know, um, huge computer systems were brought down to like small PCs, devices, laptops, and then to small, very much, much smaller handheld devices like you know smartphones and stuff like that. People embraced all this you new know, revolution because um, you know it was easy for them. I mean, they had easy access to data and pretty much everything else that they wanted in in day-to-day -day life right in their mobile phones. So um, that also motivated, you know, uh, most of the uh, the device vendors around, you know, who then went on, went on to build like, you know, uh, volumes. I mean, uh, tons of small, you know, small these gadgets, you know, which then um, led to a world full of devices. So like how it is with pretty much everything else, everything in the world, you know, everything needs to be managed at some point. So are devices. That's where you know, this device management problem comes into play. So what's device management? Some say it's secure, monitor, and manage a fleet of devices. So it's not about securing devices, it's not about monitoring devices, or it's not about managing devices. It's about you know, a combination of all these stuff that could be recognized as device management. If Securing, monitoring, and management, managing devices is you know, device management. What's connected device management, you may wonder? So I would say devi connected device management is all about making device management part of the complete business ecosystem. I mean, people are nowadays you know, talking about you know, connecting these businesses and stuff like that pretty often. And uh, um, like, n because of that, no component you know, within a particular business organization can stay in isolation. I mean, these components, I mean, even, that's pretty much the same for device management also. So this device management too has to be part of the, you know, the, the analytics infrastructure that you might have in your organization. It has to be part of the, you know, uh, the, the organization policy infrastructure as well as, you know, uh, the, uh, the business process management stuff. So that's, you know, if you do that, you know, then only you will be able to stay competitive in the market and in the, in the you know, modern day enterprise world. Now, that brings us into a you know, very interesting point where you know, it discusses about modern day enterprises. So before that, let's, let's try to like, you know, uh, you know, see how the old age enterprises look like. So in old age enterprises, so all these key components like employees, devices, and data, they were all location bound. Now, they were pretty much operating within you know, some uh, like predefined boundaries. Even when it comes to resources, like most of these resources were provided or provisioned by 
you know, the organization itself to their employees. And when it comes to technologies used, I mean, there were clear restrictions on using certain technologies also, so which basically, you know, avoided them being, you know, uh, being able to stay competitive, you know, uh, in the industry. So no wonder people call it an old school approach. So what's modern age enterprises? I mean, they're not location bound at all. So as you can see, I mean, even, I mean, people like, it's not only about employees anymore. It's about um, employees, partners, and a lot of other stakeholders as well. Now, that with the concept that, you know, the world is being considered as a one whole big global community, you know, but no one can stay in isolation. I mean, these, all these entities have to be connected. I mean, uh, like nowadays, like almost all these people, like employees, partners, and other stakeholders, they even, you know, tend to work from different countries for the same organization. So, you know, these enterprises are not, not location-bound at all. And even when it comes to the devices, most of the enterprises, you know, allow their, you know, employees to bring their own devices into the organization premises to be able to, you know, improve their productivity. So that has been a key attractive of, you know, uh, attractions of these, you know, the modern enterprises also. So that's why it's considered a new school approach. So then what's enterprise mobility and, uh, you know, how it fits into this whole jargon? So as Wikipedia says, you know, enterprise mobility is, is a shift in work habits where employees of an organization work in out of office with mobile, mobile devices and cloud services to perform certain business tasks. You know, they need to do this, you know, uh, because they need to be responsive to things like, you know, faster, and also they need to be informed of things like, you know, pretty quickly to stay, in com you know, to stay ahead in the competition. So in a typical enterprise mobility, you know, infrastructure, you may come across a lot of different, you know, uh, devices, device types being used, like phones, tablets, laptops, and uh, which are built upon like various like numerous platforms like iOS, Android, BlackBerry, Windows 8, and so on. Not only that, so uh, you may come across a lot of like uh, you know schemes like COPE, which stands for company-owned, uh, personally enabled devices, and also BYOD, which stands for bring your own devices. So you, you need a you know you need to be able to handle all this stuff, you know, uh, to be able to model a successful enterprise mobility management infrastructure in your organization. But how? I mean, what are the key, key questions to the customers, uh, sorry, to the, to the IT managers, you know, uh, when, when they are into implementing this sort of a system? Some of the key questions are like, do I allow, if I am an IT manager, do I allow employees to use their own devices? Or do I, you know, allow business partners or the distributors to use their own devices? Or, um, and then again, how to provision access to corporate resources securely? I mean, data security has always been a you know, key challenge you know, uh, in the world of enterprise mobility. And also, what device platform should be used? I mean, now that we know, you know, uh, there's a lot of device platforms being around, so people tend to use different, different you know, uh, you know, device types of their choice. So, but in my organization, what device platform should I use? And it, the story doesn't stop there. I mean, uh, then, like, I need to be able to, you know, handle multiple device platforms, you know, uh, within, within my enterprise mobility management infrastructure. So how extensible is the adapting EMM infrastructure to support all these new platforms? And also, like, you know, when it comes to BYOD, one of the, the key objectives of adapting such a mechanism is to, to be able to, like, you know, not spend too much time um, in buying people, like, devices and stuff, but rather, like, you know, the, the employees can, you know, bring their own devices into the system. But if you're not paying for buying devices but spending that money for managing the devices, you know, what's the point of, you know, adapting such a system, mechanism? You know, these are all, you know, key questions for IT managers who are trying to adapt a successful enterprise mobility management infrastructure to their organizations. So what about the key challenges? So like I said earlier, one of the key challenges has been data security. So what if my uh, you know, device is stolen? And what if you know, someone you know, comes and you know, uh, installs some malicious application into my you know, uh, device, which would then get access to all this corporate data? What if you know, I mistakenly you know, lose my mobile phone? 
And these are, you know, and, and, and also like, you know, the BYOD stuff. So the data security is because of that, you know, has always been a, a key challenge, you know, for all these IT managers. And what about device management? If I want to track my devices and if I want to, like, uh, you know, en enforce policy, policies and stuff, you know, in an easy way, how do I do that? So that, too, is because of that, you know, uh, considered, uh, you know, a, a really key challenge, you know, in the world of enterprise mobility management. Also, the enterprise application management. So what if I need to apply certain application level policies? What if I, like, uh, uh, categorize some sort of applications as blacklisted apps and whitelisted apps? So how do I do that? And also, like, how, I, how do I, like, uh, um, make all these enterprise applications, uh, you, know, uh, you know, be discoverable? You know, th those are some of the stuff, you know, uh, that are planned to, you know, uh, achieve in the, in the area of enterprise application management. And what if, I, what if my organization, what if my business organization that I've worked for, you know, wants to go mobile first? So as we all know, mobile first is basically focusing more on, you know, uh, you know these small, like, devices like, you know, uh, uh, the mobile phones and tablets and stuff like that, rather than focusing on, you know, uh, traditional PCs and, uh, you know, the laptops and stuff like that. So how do I, you know, adapt such a, you know, mechanism to my organization, you know, uh, with the, the same capabilities of device management, you know, uh, implemented as part of my whole enterprise mobility management infrastructure? So overcoming these monstrous challenges, you know, has been a real, you know, a challenge for most of the people. And at that point, I would like to introduce WS2 Mobile Device Manager as a potential solution. But the key question is, how? How do we do that with WS2 Mobile Device Manager? So let me tell you a couple of stories around, you know, so that you, will, you would get a bit of an idea about, you know, some of the concepts and the, the, the features that we've got in the, the WS2 Mobile Device Manager. So let me, you know, first take this use case where, you know, we, we try to, you know, implement some sort of a, you know, a mobile device management policy upon, uh, you, know, uh, you know, employees in a certain organization. So there was this guy, you know, uh, who I used to know, who was, again, like, working for one of these, you know, local organizations. You know, but one of his habits, I mean, one of his, like, you know, very unusual habits was, like, he used to take pictures of pretty much everything that he bumps into. I mean, he even, like, you know, even, he even was a you know, fan of, like, taking selfies and stuff like that. So one day, he decided to take a selfie while he was at work, but unfortunately, without him knowing it, he um, like exposed some very sensitive company data, you know, uh, in one of his pictures that he posted on Facebook. So then, um, to make things worse for him, his immediate manager spotted that right away, which is again another reason why you should not add your face, you know, your boss on Facebook. Uh, you know, then you know what that person did was what his boss did was, like you know, he, he was like wondering how do I like prevent such things from happening. So he wanted to, like, you know, have some sort of a feature implemented where he could, um, you know, disable all these cameras when people are at work. So the WS2 Mobile Device Manager can, like, you know, provide you with some com comprehensive policy compos composition capabilities to do stuff like that. You know, as the, the you know, the picture in the, you know, the slide itself depicts. So you can, you know, create a simple policy to enable I would disable the cameras and enforce it to, you know, uh, you know, people, you know, in certain roles or certain like individuals, you know, uh, according to various different, you know, ownership types like BYOD or COPE. So that's just one story, you know, uh, where it, it shows, you know, how capable the WS2 Mobile device Manager is. And the next use case is about saving marriages with with WS2 Mobile device Manager. So. There was this guy called Tom, you know, uh, who was a very passionate uh, employee, and who was also like, you know, married to a sort of a demanding girl, I would say. So then, you know, uh, you know, to tell you how passionate he was with, you know, uh, with his, you know, the day-to-day, the, the -day, you know, job stuff, 
he used to work in our, uh, on, he was always on his mobile, even when we, he was with his loved ones and you know, when he was at parties and everywhere else. So, one day, he mistakenly you know, forgot his uh, you know, uh, device, the, the corporate provided device in, in one of the washrooms, and uh, unfortunately, all his sensitive company data got compromised. When he boss got to know about this whole thing, he was so pissed at him, and you know, it ended up, you know, uh, things ended up in like um, Tom getting fired out of the organization. So, you know, I, I guess you remember, like I was talking about, you know, you know, Tom's wife being a little demanding. So then, you know, his wife was also pissed at him for, for all that happened, and then, you know, uh, they, they went into, like, you know, they. they came across a lot of like, you know, personal problems after that point onwards. So, if WSO2, you know, mobility device, mobile device management server was used in this environment, I mean, you could easily have created a policy, you know, uh, you know so that the device, all the data, you know, used in these devices would get wiped out automatically when the device is taken out of like, you know, certain allowed you know, parameters of an, of an organization. So you know, uh, the WS2 Mobile Device Manager you know, offers that sort of comprehensive policy composition support with its, you know, the rest of the, the functionalities. So what else can WS2 MDN do other than saving marriages? Well, it offers you with some comprehensive set of functionalities you know, in, the, in the section of uh, um, the remote device management. It, it not only it allows you to you know self service it allows you to do self service device enrollment but it you know also lets you manage both employee and corporate you know own you know devices and uh, it has support for Android and iOS but we are hoping to add uh, Windows you know device management support too uh, as well as you know the laptop support too you know uh, pretty soon and, and like I already you know already you know uh, discussed. It has support for policy-driven device management for security data and device-related features as well. Not only that, you know, uh, you can certainly deploy policies over the air, and you've got role-based access control for device management-related tasks, and, and a whole bunch of other you know, functionalities in the space of remote device management. And also, it, it supports you know, pretty much almost all the aspects of uh, mobile device management lifecycle, starting right from the point where you know, the device gets enrolled into the system, and then you, know, you, can policy enforce, you can do some policy enforcements, compliance monitoring, and device enrollments, and stuff like that. So in the space of device identity management, you, know, you can certainly do certificate provisioning, and it has already got support for you know, protocols like SCEP, Simple Certificate Enrollment Protocol, you know, WSTEP, and, uh, and also like you know, dynamic client registration, which has been implemented upon Open ID Connect dynamic client registration, you know, uh, you know, spec. When it comes to monitoring and analytics, you know, uh, we've got compliance monitoring with WS2 CEP, you know, as part of the, the WS2 mob mobile device manager, and then we've got location tracking, enable auditing of data in rest and data in motion. And also, it has comprehensive supports for you know people to come up with certain dashboards, reports, and uh, you know graphs upon you know certain desired KPIs with WS2 Business Activity Monitor as well. So, in the space of data security, it supports you know it supports device containerization, which is also known as uh, dual personas and password policies, data encryption, and a whole lot of other you know very really interesting functionalities as well. Enterprise application management, so uh, with the help of this other component in the WS2 Enterprise Middleware stack called WS2 App Manager, you know, application policies and, uh, you know, could also be enforced, you know, as part of the whole um, mobility, you know, device management uh, functionalities as well. And then also it supports blacklisting and whitelisting applications making applications discoverable, discoverable and, and, and stuff like that too. So when it comes to the addi additional features, you know, it integrates, you can integrate, you know, the enterprise um, mobility manager or basically the mobile device manager into, uh, you know, a lot of enterprise identity systems for device ownership like LDAP, Microsoft, Microsoft ID, you know, pretty much any RDBMS system, 
uh, and so on. And also, it, it, it is rich in horizontal scaling via clustering, and also extensible, it's, its extensible transport pr framework makes it easy for everyone to plug in like pretty much any new fancy transports that you, wanna, you, you, might, you might want to kind of configure your you know, devices upon. So what makes WS2 NDM stand out? So it, it, it's not only, it's, it's about, you know, uh, the platform aspect, like, like we all, always, you know, uh, you know be, we've always been highlighting. So uh, the WS2 NDM is also built upon, you know, this award-winning WS2 Carbon platform. So if you're, if you're already familiar with, you know, some component like WS2 Enterprise Service Bus or the WS2 Message Broker or something like that, it's not going to be big. It's not going to be a big deal for you to get yourself familiar with, you know, the WC2 Mobile Device Manager as well, because you know it has pretty much the same set of configurations, you know, uh, within almost all these components. And also, like the key benefits, you know, key attractive benefits, you know, uh, uh, I mean, the operational benefits that it, you know, offers you are composing. I mean, being, I'm being able to compose and. Uh, Manage granular level security policies for individual groups, devices, and location based on, you know, basically the role of work style, and also uh, the ability to make strategic decisions where, you know, data gathered through all activities are a simple and clean interface. And also, you can transform businesses through anytime, anywhere, secure access to, you know, pretty much all your information as well. Not only that, you know, the users can select the devices, you know, that best meet their individual needs. You know, including personally owned, you know, devices while they're still being managed over a centralized entity. And uh, also, it enables empl employees to be able to make more efficient and faster decisions. You know, decision making. You know, where embracing concepts like DYOD. When it comes to the financial benefits, you know, you can certainly get rid of all these unattractive paper device, paper device pricing models. You know, uh, and also, like, if you're confident, you can download, deploy, and run, you know, all these servers absolutely for no cost yourself. And also, like, you know, it offers you, you know, key financial benefits, like, you know, embrace, embracing bring your own device and uh, policies and, and basically, you know, by saving per enterprise device procurement and data plan costs associated with each users. So that's about it, you know. Uh <laughs>